back again, year two. Good seeing you all. Who was here last year? Only a couple of guys, all right. And enjoying it today? How has the conference been so far? Come on, be more enthusiastic, come on. I, I thought Christian would have heated you up, and come on. You're not a cold country. I mean, you have snow, yeah, but and polar bears, but you're not. You're warm-hearted. Come on, you should be more. So, did you like it today already? Yes. All right. I hope I will not disappoint you either. Yeah, I will try to do my best. Um, if there's PowerShell people, uh, people hating uh, PowerShell in the room, now it's time to leave because I will show some PowerShell. So, fear not. Uh, it's a, it's a tooling. Um, maybe. A little explanation on the happiness factory. I'm not going to talk about API uh, development, if you were thinking that. So <laughs> that's the, 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 the goal straight. It's about using the Azure APIs to make your own tools. Yeah? For those who had a misunderstanding, I had that once during Take Days and they didn't read the abstract. So I hope you all read the abstract and that is, is about uh, API usage. So first of all, let me introduce myself. I'm Mike Martin. I'm one of the three Belgians that are uh, currently in the premises or should be in the premises. I think the third one will be arriving shortly. Um, Azure MVP, uh, fun bunch. Uh, I've been doing Azure since almost the beginning um, and I work in Belgium as an Azure architect and solution guider and trainer and yeah, basically a community uh, gather around lead for uh, the Azure user group. I'm also one of the um, people behind the Azure Global Bootcamp. So if you still haven't created a, a location for Finland or an additional location for Finland, please do so. There's still plenty of room there. All right, enough about me. So who knows this? In Sweden, this catches on immediately. Um, they know that best because they invented the damn thing. But <laughs> yeah, the <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so if you if you build if you're taking an IKEA cupboard or whatever Billy it's called, or um, and you you start building, uh, you get a box, and you open it, and there's always some things in there that you uh, can use to construct a cupboard, right? There's always this little uh, bitwise uh, key that you can use to screw in all the screws and make sure that everything gets connected well. But there's always a couple of things that you still need to use to construct your cupboard, like a hammer, maybe a screw an extra screwdriver, some glue if you want to put the cupboard more sturdy against the, against the wall, uh, things like that. Now. The reason why I'm saying this is because we, we tend to collect a lot of tooling and a lot of tooling comes out of the box in the case of the IKEA. Yeah? Um, also people ha like tool sheets. There's an, another talk that I have which is connected to this one talking about real tooling that you can buy. We'll go over that in, at the end of my talk too. Uh, but tooling is important if you do daily management of your operations. Yeah. Azure has grown humongously. Yeah. It's no longer just a couple of services, it's like 250 services, but if you need to manage it, not everything that is in the portal or in the PowerShell or in the AZ client is sufficient for you to do your management and sometimes you need a combination of that. Right? So hence, I'm going to show you the key points that you can use to generate and create your own tooling. Either through PowerShell, either through Visual Studio, either through a couple of uh, pointers that I'm showing you. And I even have a small surprise at the end of it. So there was first surprise at the beginning of my talk and I also have a surprise at the end of my talk. So still with me? All right. Did I tickle to your interest or? Yes. Okay, good. So sometimes you only have basic tools, like I said, the portal or PowerShell or something. And you, and they get the job done, but sometimes you just need to evolve and improve. You need some more additions, like bits that you can change, and you want to evolve to this. Come on, geeks, you know this. We're all geeks, right? Huh? This, is, this is what? The? the sonic screwdriver by Doctor Who, the guy who flies with. And there's some other tools that you can use, like a hammer, for instance, or the ultimate hammer. That they all know, right? Mjolnir, yeah. I'm rather a collector of tools and I end up with this. You want a tool belt that you can use in your daily operations that you can actually start 
uh, figuring out what you need to do day by day. And then for this, for this specific task, I will need this tool, and for that, I need that tool. And of course, with the right tool, well, you get the idea. Uh, that guy created from a paperclip, he created an atomic bomb. And uh, before I know it, uh, yeah, you get the idea. So, name that tool. We're not going to name the tool, but what we're going to do is let's see where you have challenges today, and let's see where we can where we can guide you to make your own tools and um, give you some ideas and some demos. All right. So, first of all, the Azure APIs. So. Azure is, has a lot of um, documentation on the REST APIs that you can use today. Yeah. The downside is it's still a REST API. And you need to do a lot of manual work in there. You need to construct your URI. You need to construct your uh, request. Uh, the body has to be correct. You have to test it out correctly. You need, to, you need some tooling next to that to make sure that you see everything passing along. And luckily enough, the um, APIs are well documented. Um, since the beginning, and this is the first step that you can actually use to create uh, your own uh, uh, applications. I have a small example here, which is based upon the, um, it's this one. Uh, yeah. So what I did here is I use PowerShell, and nowadays it's easier to connect to the APIs through the means of uh, service principles. You just inject them. You can generate them mostly with either uh, by code, uh, the AZ client, or the PowerShell uh, commandlets that you can have. So you just do and uh, add an additional AD application. You make sure that you uh, create a new service principle upon that application, and then from there out you do role assignment. So that way the uh, service principle has all the access to your resources. So that way it can create or manage the uh, the endpoints, right? Now, there's one thing that hasn't uh, had good management tooling in the beginning, which was Security Center. Who, who, who is using Security Center today? Nobody? Shame on you. Should be. If, you, if you're taking Azure seriously and you're, you want to make sure that, that you know what's happening in your environment, Security Center is a must-go-to. You just, just activate it. That doesn't mean that you have to go through the paying version, but you still need to use it. The thing that you can do with it is can, it will check your entire environment if uh, there's vulnerabilities, if there's um, things going on that are not right. It has a machine learning mechanism behind it uh, showing you where there's threats and where there's actually breaches of your security boundaries. So that's actually a good thing. Now, what I did here is I created a small uh, REST API call, just showing all the security statuses that come back from Security Center, and by using the Rome API, which is a code name for the Security Center API, I just can take that back by just doing a normal REST method, um, REST invoke uh, method request. So if you take a look at the code, I give it my client ID, I give it a secret, give the tenant ID, give it a token, endpoint, I construct my body, I construct the parameters. And this is where all the API stuff comes up. So first of all, we have the endpoint, which is most of the time management.azure.api.com, uh, I mean. Uh, and you eject that with your subscription and your subscription ID, and then you have to construct a really long URI that is the endpoint where you can find that resource that you want to attribute to. Yeah? So for this one, for this particular one, I want to take a look at the, uh, and I put it totally at the end. I want to look at the security statuses. So what I'm going to do here is just going to run this piece of code. I already foresaw the service principle because it takes a little, it can take up a little while. Um, I'm just going to run this one. Just press an F8, make sure that I'm, voila. So that's back. And now I'm going to show that information into a, um, a little tooling uh, that you can download for free in the PowerShell cookbook, which is called Show Object. This will visualize in a WPF um, window the object that has been generated, and so that way we can read through it. And of course, it will pop up on my other screen. Yeah. So here it is. I don't know whether you can see it correctly, but I can now go and take a look at all the objects that, have, that are in the security center, and I can just read out all the data that is in there. So this is just a REST method that I'm calling. Yeah. 
just like you would do with normal .NET code or with anything else, but I'm just using PowerShell for the use of it. So this is a kind of a tool that you can, can, can use to generate a report or uh, 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 create a, uh, a put request or another uh, post request to get some, info, uh, some uh, actions done for instance, so that stays the same way of managing it. So, but the, the, the main idea behind this is that you call the URIs of the API, you create the correct uh, HTTP request, and with all the specifics of the uh, endpoints that you need to call, and you just get back all the information that you need. Okay, so that, that's for the APIs that you can call. now. Microsoft wouldn't be Microsoft if they didn't create something around it. They have the, created this something which we call the SDK. Yeah. Who's using the Azure SDK today? Most of them are using it for the storage probably, but there's also SDK for anything else, like for service bus, that's another $5 down. You didn't hear that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, or Cosmos DB, which is also a popular uh, topic these days, right? But there's, there's SDK uh, and NuGet packages for everything. So, talking about those things, yeah. so it's MAML is the Ma Microsoft Azure Ma uh, Management Libraries, which is the older name. Uh, uh, they make your life a little bit easier, especially nowadays because they changed the way they attribute to it, and they actually um, wrap around the REST APIs. And the cool thing is that Microsoft actually uses them themselves in tools that you use today. I think everybody here uses Visual Studio, Right? The Cloud Explorer that you're using is actually using the MAML. Yeah? But also the extensions that you have inside of Visual Studio Code is, is making use of these NuGet packages. Okay? Did you know that? Yeah? So they use the SDK actually as a back point. Yeah? So there's a lot of things that you can do. You can just implement them as portable class libraries. They're implemented as portable class libraries. You can just use them through NuGet. Download these, uh, and there's a, a, a NuGet package for each of the uh, resources available, for each of the resource types, and from there you can just skim down to every single uh, bit of them. Now you have to make sure, in the past it was a little bit hard to use these because you had two versions. Why? Because all of a sudden we made the switch from ASM to ARM. For those who are old school, and they put chairs here for me because I'm old and I have to rest from time to time. And it was nice of Carl to put some chairs here for me to rest. But for those who have been using Azure a long time, you know that there were, there were two methods of calling Azure. There was the classic way, which was Azure Service Management, and now today we have Azure Resource Management, which is totally the new way of doing it, and the correct way, and the only way of doing it, because the other portal have finally died. We cannot access it anymore, and normally all the classic resources have been put underneath all the ARM resources. Okay. So as the API evolved, as I said, uh, also the SDK evolved and we have new ways of touching it. So today we have an easier way of setting up and starting up and they implemented now the Fluent API on the Azure NuGet packages. Cool thing is that it's self-responsive, it, it, it generates a good uh, way of, of, of using the uh, management APIs and they're self-describing. Everything that a normal Fluent API should do is implemented on this, lev on this level. Is there anybody here who already uses this, the Fluent APIs? One guy. Are you all too shy to mention? You're quiet. Is this after lunch? Is this the afternoon? Or are you just lacking beer? No, this is Finland. This is Finland. Yeah, I know, I know the Nordics are quiet countries, but come on. You're better than that. All right. So, Maybe some demos and some, um, some codes uh, would be interesting for you guys. Let me just close this for a second. Voila. And let me go to Visual Studio. So what I created here is just some .NET code. It works in either, uh, you can either use these in um, Java, .NET, PHP, uh, there's even a Go SDK, there, I think there's even one for Ruby. So whatever rocks your boat, or whatever makes your, uh, makes your world rock, it, there's probably a solution for it. Right? Uh, and it can work in any kind of uh, AID that you love. Right? So what you can do here is if you take a look at the, um, let me just open this up. At our references in the, you see there's a lot of, I loaded the entire management library stack. So there's a lot of uh, packages that are loaded by, um, 
by default with all the dependencies. If you take the top level, all the dependencies will come with it. Yeah? So you can just easily implement it by using your normal package management uh, methods uh, by installing the packages through the, to the command line or just by the package management tooling from uh, Visual Studio. Put them in your own feeds if you want to through by means of NuGet, MyGet or something. Uh, you can just do it the way you love, right? Now, you have some uh, users that you have and the, the calling that you need to do is the Microsoft.Azure.Management uh, resource manager is one of those, what, which is the, the top level of all the resources that you can manage through resource groups. And then you have uh, things like compute, uh, but also key vault, there's SQL in there, there's really a lot of things that you can actually use. If you just open up the code and break up the code uh, a little bit, we can just say uh, Microsoft, oh, my typing isn't that well for the moment. So Microsoft, <coughs> there we go, dot Azure, dot management and as you can see there's CDN there's a uh, batch in there so most of the uh, Azure services that are available you can manage through these API uh, to these um, um, code pieces so what I did here is I created a small console application and the cool thing is the thing uh, that we that we, I mentioned earlier through the means of the uh, service principles is also applicable here. You can still um, authenticate through other means, like with your own uh, users or something. Uh, if you want to have a more granular um, audit trailing, yeah, you can also do that. But from here out, you just can do an authentication by means of a, a file or um, by means of a user. Yeah. Yeah, service principle. Yeah, just like the one I just created for the API call, you just can use reuse the one that I uh, created before that. So once, yeah, it depends. If you want to have an, a trailing of, of, if you're creating resources or managing resources and you stop the VM, you want to know that you did it and not that anybody else did it or that it is a generic user and that makes it harder. Depending on your needs, there's, there's something to say for everything, right? It's better that you authenticate with your own user and I put it against it. But you need some, some code for that, right? So what the um, Fluent API does, it can easily just say, I'm gonna create a new resource group, for instance, and you just generate a, um, an object uh, based upon the Azure uh, class, um, which then can be used to authenticate immediately create a resource group, define the resource group. So defining is, means you name it, the idea will come back with it. Uh, you can read it immediately. You also have uh, enumerators for all the regions in there which are being aut automatically generated and stuff like that. So it's pretty cool and pretty easy to use. I'm not a, a, a pro developer anymore. I can use this. <laughs> Just kidding, right? <laughs> um, so what I did here is I just created a couple of VMs by this code. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to run this sample. And as you can see, you can just easily create networking, put all the dependencies in there, and then just call the code that you uh, called before that, and reuse all the things that you uh, created before that. And as you can see, I'm going to use the, uh, the created storage account and the created virtual machine. Um, and the networking is also should also be in there, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, it should be reused somewhere. By the way, um, so that way you can just construct your uh, your own application. So let's let's think about something like you want to make a management tooling just to start and stop your VMs, and you don't want to make people go to the um, to the portal. Or even better, who knows that there is a uh, Windows and uh, that there is an iOS app or an Android app available to manage your uh, exactly to manage your Azure resources? Yeah. Did you know that that there's a, an, an an app store app available that you can download? That even has a PowerShell and a um, uh, Azure client uh, shell built in, and that's based also on these tools. So they actually, again, do some dog fooding. So if you want to create, sorry? Uh, I, what's the name? Azure Management uh, App, I think. Running a, running a command line 
Yeah. That's re it's really geeky, yeah. Just like running DOS or, or uh, Commodore on your PC, right? But download it, and you will see that it actually uses the same the same uh, packages and the same uh, li uh, management libraries. Yeah. So if I were to run this, making sure that I'm oh, I didn't select it. Sorry. Here we go. I will now. So what it will do, it will create, just put this aside for a second. It will create, and where's my, here we are. So I will go to my resource groups just to make sure. I'm gonna go there for a second. Where's my resource groups? Resource groups, resource groups, here we are. So I'm gonna create a resource group called Iglo. I'm just going to go for the um, correct area. I'm just going to put this away for a second. Here we are. So, Iglo, I'm just going to type this in here. That hasn't been created yet. That's from last. No, 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 don't go there. Don't go there. Right. So, I'm just going to run this. Keep it running. And normally, if all goes well, it will immediately create me a um, a resource group. Here you are. Here we have it. And in that resource group, let me just try to make it a little bit bigger. The resolution sucks a little bit for from the distance. And as you can see, it created some networking cards. It created uh, a virtual network. If I do a refresh again, it will probably have already created my two Linux boxes. Not yet, but it will, or is, am I still in break mode? I don't know, let's see. No, it should be, should be fine, all's well. Give it a couple of seconds. Voila, here we go. So I just created, in just a couple of minutes, seconds, I created some VMs. I know Rick will disagree with me that that is not the way of creating resources, and I also agree with him there, a little bit. Um, <laughs> the first, the first step of having is this acceptance, right? If you have a problem, no, no, I, I, I agree that ARM templates is the way of creating resources, not always, but for most of the time. But this is just if you can create it, you can also manage it. You can read out all the data, and that's something that you can do with ARM templates. You st this is when you want to create your own tooling inside that you say, I want to start sub some machines, or just want to uh, inject some data into something and have some management interface, and that wants to have some own Win32, UWP, uh, whatever kind of uh, application that you want to run instead of running it into an application server. Right, so it, it can easily be done just through these fluent APIs, and just injecting those NuGet packages will make your your life very easy just to developing your resources. And if you have a good designer, you can even make a nice tool about it. Yeah. There's also another cool thing that you probably don't know, but for those who have uh, have ever visited the the GitHub pages. Um, with all the samples of the ARM templates, which also Rick mentioned earlier, there's always, uh, sometimes you see those, uh, those buttons, those Heroku buttons, uh, deploy to Azure. Yeah? Have you seen those before? You probably have, right? It's, just, it's the blue button stating deploy to Azure. Actually, what they do in the background is also using these fluent uh, APIs or the uh, Azure management libraries. It's the, uh, the guy who created it, uh, Brady Gasser, he implemented it together with, uh, with a guy who had some time left. I think it was even Corey Fowler who created the website. But anyway, and what they do is underneath they actually use it and they uh, do a, a Git clone and then they create, through the management libraries, they create the resource, and then from there out it will be uh, generated. Yeah? And um, in the beginning, it used to look something like uh, this. Where is it? Deploy to Azure. And nowadays, it cannot be used really that way because you get an immediately an, an endpoint. But uh, this was the way that you could construct a button. And again, these management uh, libraries are behind those things. You can just inject your template, and that will work for you. All right? So, still with me? Learned something already? Good. All right. 
goal achieved. Saka, that's for next year, right? <laughs> All right. All right. I already mentioned some PowerShell, but there's also, of course, the PowerShell commandlet specifically created for uh, doing Azure management. Of course, you can create your resources, but, uh, but also the management part of your resources and assets is being generated here. Oh, okay, stupid me. Uh, I can stop this one. I will d delete. Oh, I can just continue. That way, my resource group will be immediately deleted. And if it crashes, I don't care. Um, so for those developers amongst us, most of you guys, eh, don't fear the shell. If you are a developer, you should learn PowerShell. I've been stating this for like at least the last six years, or even since the beginning of PowerShell. That's 2007. When did Vista come out? 2007, right? Uh, something like that. PowerShell is, is it's .NET, only a little bit wrapped. You, since you know .NET and since you know that you can work with objects, PowerShell is your friend, it's not your foe. Yeah. Learn to live with it and learn to, to love it. Yeah. And as you will see, it will be easier to generate stuff for you guys. Yeah. It just looks a little bit weird because they have a weird uh, syntax sometimes. And just to get you started, there's a couple of commands that you just need to learn if you want to learn PowerShell and that's it. If you know these, you know everything. I actually started a course once on PowerShell. People wanted to learn PowerShell. I only had one slide, get help. And I ran off stage. People didn't get it quite, but hey. So there's only three commands that you need to know because they, these help you discover your uh, commandlets that you can use. It's very easy. The, the assets in, in Azure have a name, service bus. Just look for git command and just use git command star service bus star and you will get commands with service bus. VM star VM star. Of course, if you're running Hyper-V, you should also be aware that you can see some Hyper-V commandlets there because it, they, these are also using uh, VM uh, commandlets. But then you just add the module and you're good to go again. Right? So, um, and there's some specifics in Azure that you can uh, that you need to remember. You have accounts, you have subscriptions, and you have assets, and you have Azure Resource Manager specific stuff, uh, like your profiling and all these things. You, these are the things that you need better learn by heart because it helps you uh, easily use your PowerShell environment. Okay, so for giving you an idea, I have a small um, PowerShell script again. And this is actually something I thought of. Um, who's using Monitor today, Azure Monitor? Only two guys. So Martin was right, uh, Mark was right, you're not monitoring, you're not throttling, you're not using PowerShell. So luckily you came today, at least you, le you learned the three buzzwords. <laughs> I'm just messing with you guys. Um, but the one thing that is missing as a tooling perspective, for me, is the auto generation of dashboards in the, power, in the portal. Wouldn't it be nice if you just could generate a dashboard with some basic monitoring of all your web apps? Who's, you, who's doing web apps today? Raise your hand higher. That's about, yeah, that's about one third, one half of the room. So if you're doing web apps, what you want to see immediately is all your requests that are coming in and all your failed requests, all your HTTP requests, like 500s, 400s, all those things. And those are basic monitoring things. Those are basic uh, tiles that you can just plunge into the portal uh, from perspective. But, but wouldn't it be nice if you were like, to, for instance, to have 20 websites running on your, on your Azure environment that it would it automatically generate all the base styles for you, even some markdown dashboard where you can just click through the Kudu and the uh, Monaco editor. Wouldn't that be cool? For those who don't know Kudu and the Monaco editor, uh, learn them. These are very important tools. Martin has a great talk on Kudu from the past. But. So this PowerShell uh, thing actually does that. So what I'm doing here is I'm generating markdown injecting that into a small file, I even download the file or generate it on the fly, and I generate some JSON output. I'm not storing that in GitHub, by the way, yeah. but I'm generating some JSON output, and then I'm deploying the same JSON by means of resource manager commandlets. Yeah. And this is where I do the uh, deployment. 
And as you can see here, in the, totally at the bottom, I'm gen generating some, uh, some metrics parts. This is pure uh, ARM templating uh, JSON. It's like, for instance, this Q-Link and HTTP Q-Link. These are the tiles that we want to see. I also do this for, uh, from, the, from the different uh, HTTP uh, requests that are coming back. So I got a couple of those in there. So what I'm going to do now is, before I run this, I'm just going to open up the portal again. And that is here. So you know that you can share um, dashboards, right? So if you have a group um, of people that need to manage or uh, dashboards, and you can create a dashboard, you can actually share it with other people. That's exactly what I'm doing. I'm creating a shareable dashboard. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to go to um, show all dashboard, browse all dashboards, and normally, if all is well, I'm going to share dashboards. There's no, did I delete it or didn't I delete it? Yes, I deleted it. So that's good. So in a couple of seconds, there will be a uh, markdown something something on um, constant demo environment. So I'm going to run this now. Okay. And the, mar the dashboard that it will create will be located in Western Europe. It will have a markdown tile called Ingloconf 2018 MD dashboard. And it will have a subtitle, Welcome to the Show. So if all is well, it is still doing it. It is running. Oh, yeah, it's no, no wonder. I'm waiting for something because I need to authenticate. So I didn't use the uh, service principle here. Sorry, it was on the other screen. Here we go. So once I'm authenticated, what it will do, it will iterate through all the resources that I have of that specific uh, resource type, all the web apps, all the app service plans, and it will generate all these uh, dashboard um, specifics. So it takes some time, as you can see. Wait for it. Wait for it. Bear with. That's normal. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Almost done. Come on. Finish already. It was a lot faster before lunch. Probably taking it siesta. Come on. Right. Meanwhile, I'm just going to go already to the portal. Let's see. It should be already there if I just was to say constant demo env and just put this one away. Let's go over there. It should be no fonts. Generated or am I wait? Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, stupid me again. I'm waiting for another screen. Um, if you're using PowerShell, there's a, a cool thing called Out Grid View where you can select things that you want to re reuse, and this is one of them. So if I was to say create it for the correct um, Subscription, that is this one. I can just use this one, but I need to make it a little bit smaller. That's the downside of having presenter view. And this grid view actually allows you to uh, pass through the things that you uh, selected in this, in this view and pass it onto another commandlet. So if I were to do OK now, it will take some time now. Come on, iterate. There we go. It's doing it. It's getting all the resource group. Sorry about that. Totally didn't see on this screen. Was waiting on that screen. Wait for it. Wait for it. Wait for it. Five resource group processed. Yes. Here we go.
there we have it. So now, if I go to check here again, I chip this off and I chip this on again, it should be, no, it's not doing, refreshing it well. Should have a talk with Leon on this because that doesn't automatically refresh us. So if I now were to do this, normally it should be there. There you have it. If I open this dashboard now, you will actually see that it generated my markdown. And now my browser crashes, I think, no. It will have generated my markdown and it will generate all the tiles of all the websites that are running in the subscription. And to make it even more clear, I will just change the background a little bit so that way you can. And coolest thing is I can immediately go to the Kudu sites. I generated the link to the Kudu site for this site, for instance. And that will open the Kudu site for, uh, I think it was go to Dojo Kits or something. But also the app service environment editor is automatically being generated for you guys. And you have all the metrics that you need to, mon to start monitoring basically your things. You can do this with any tile if you know the resource. If you know the resource description and the descriptor and you can just inject that into your. This is available on GitHub on my uh, GitHub account. And you just can download it and you can just use it and start off with that. I'm still working on the VM part and on other parts, but this is basically useful, right? All right. So. If you don't like PowerShell, there's still the AZ client, so the, um, the cross-platform command line interface. It used to be Azure and then whack whack everything else. Now they change it to AZ because it's more universal and they want to go more to the uh, NPM and other um, environment likes. Uh, you can just use that again for uh, cross-platform tool making, but then it will be more script-based. Script instead of uh, interfacing, unless you can inject that. But the cool thing is in Visual Studio Code, this will also be used if you use the extensions for managing your environment. Now, um, I advise you, because I'm run almost running out of time, uh, since I don't have enough time, I advise you to take a look at that other conferences um, uh, recordings from Brady Gasser at Cloudburst. Sorry, plugging it, but it's a good example. There's a, a nice demo of how it's actually in VS Code, the extensions that you're using for, for managing web apps and stuff. If you create a web app from there, it will actually also generate a script at the end and put it into your VS Code and you can immediately reuse it for other stuff. So that's pretty cool. But starting from a, an, a bash script, like this one, it's harder to create your own application-like style uh, environments, right? And another thing that can be added as tooling, as real tool making is Azure Automation. And the reason why I'm mentioning this is you always have some resources that you want to shut down at night. This is one of the ways to do it. Yeah. There's a lot of uh, example scripts that you can use uh, from the um, PowerShell galleries that you can inject immediately into automation. It will help you schedule your uh, environment for some resources that you can shut down during the night. You can actually inject those and just use that as a tooling. That's also part of the things that you can do with all the tips that I'm giving you here. You can automate your environment, putting it up from the moment your workers enter the building. It will be ra um, powered up and when they go home at night, you can just power them down. That's one instance. But also for high maintenance, copying things, uh, again, putting the metrics there or having HTML reports. Yeah. So these things can be used from that perspective too. And just leave that to your reading because there's something else that I really want to show you. Now, these are tools that you can create yourself, but sometimes we're just lazy, right? We want to have something, uh, we want to buy something and we just want to have tools. Well, there's a lot of tooling vendors available on the market that provide good tools. I'm going to show you a couple of them. Uh, these are just a few names to mention it. Like, for instance, uh, Azure Docket, Service Bus 360, Celebrata. Celebrata was actually one of the first with their Azure Management Studio. And the cool thing there was that you had full diagnostics. Um, capabilities with that. You could have metrics in there, you could have uh, link, link based, uh, so L-I-N-Q based uh, queries on your table storage in the past, stuff like that. It was pretty, pretty neat. Now, I'm going to show you a couple of them. One of them is Cerulean, yeah? and Cerulean allows you based on, uh, on a kind of electron interface, so it, it works for all platforms, it allows you to, here we are, 
put it on the other screen. Cerulean allows you to manage things like Cosmos DB on all the API levels, so also for Gremlin, which is pretty neat. But also Redis cache can be used. You can inject messages, you can check messages, you can purge your entire uh, memory. Uh, service bus, which is very cool, because you can actually have a good uh, metric and monitoring there. And I use that for demoing purposes. I use that with another tool called Service Bus Explorer. I can just generate some messages on the fly with Service Bus Explorer. And what it does here, you can actually see in real time, you will probably see my graph changing because I just added a couple of messages there and you can do have some real time monitoring. Also, Service Bus 360 has the same capabilities and that can be combined with Logic Apps. Yeah. Um, but these tools are actually pretty, pretty easy to use and they also use the same techniques that I mentioned here. One of, probably one of the best tools on the market today is Azure Docket. Who has heard of Azure Docket? Only two people. All right, then it's time to make some more noise about this tool. This tool, if you take Azure seriously, and if you take your change management and your, uh, your documentation seriously, this is your one-stop shop. What Azure Docket does, and this is so cool, and I amaze people with it every single time, and I keep getting amazed. So Azure Docket, what it does, it will scan through your entire subscription, or subscriptions if you have multiple, you can even let it go on an, on an EA account or a CSP. And what it does, it allows you to um, generate by means of a template, your own or theirs, Visio templates or Word templates. It will generate you the documentation, your graphical layout, your graphical Visio layout of, of your environments and your, how your resource groups are constructed. Um, you can have an executive summary. It even can generate change documentation. All the changes that have been made over the last month, you can schedule this. And these are all things built with the, tool, with the tips that I gave you. So you could be the next tooling vendor. I hope you do, right? And I'm just going to show you a couple of, of, of things that you can do with it. The content that you can, uh, you can generate visual diagrams. Um, you can include metrics. You can go into the depth of a VM. If you're doing VMs, I know Where's Christian? Christian is gone. I know Christian is against VMs, so am I, but if you're still running VMs for some workloads, pins, huh? um, you can see all the installed programs, for instance. Also on billing level, you get a, a nice uh, advisory part on, uh, on your billing where you can gain a few bucks. Pretty interesting. Um, so SQL databases. App services. So all these things can be read out through uh, the Azure Docket. It will also use your credentials to log into it. Yeah. It can create a comparison. It can create a drop-off on your Office 365 environment, so in a SharePoint, so that way immediately everybody can see it, and you can run your Visios into Visual Online, for instance. You can filter on all the different um, resources, and they do, immediate, they do a combination of the Fluent APIs and the uh, REST APIs immediately. So they have a small combo there. So it takes a while to generate the documentation, but I already did that be right before I stepped on stage. And as you can see here, this is the result. So it's generated for all these things, for all these resources, it generated me documentation and Visio files. As a return, you get this content. So you get a mail stating, where is it, where are the mails? Don't say I closed them, that would be, you know, all right, the, the mails have been closed. Okay. You get two mails, one with the executive summary and one with the download links of your documentation. You can immediately put it in Azure Storage if you want to. And if you then open all these different files, so you get a couple of visual files and you get one Word document. And if you take a look at the Word document, it will generate stuff like this, for instance. This is like, for instance, a server layout with all the different Azure components in it. The disks, the storage accounts, some information. And as you will see, it has about, let's say, view, 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 uh, multiple pages. It has about 137 pages of documentation generated for you with advisory, with patterns and practices in there. Even Mark Sims would love this tool. Uh, there's some good documentation on service beside the usages. So that's also, again, a plug. That's another $5. Thank you, Dan. <laughs> 
And as you can see, there's a, yeah, of course, there's a large index. There you, you get your region deployments. That's also pretty neat to see where you, did, where you did all your deployments. As you can see, there's a lot of graphs. In it. And the coolest part is that it also has 3D generated Physio. <laughs> right? And to top it off, so that was the demos that I want to show you, but it's really worth it's not that it's not that expensive. I think it's for one year, two hundred and something something. If you're an MVP, you're entitled to uh to a version. So just go to the MVP perks. Yeah, yeah, I know I'm over time. Um <laughs> So take a good look at this. You can even try a demo. It will blank out some parts. Yeah? Um, but at least you get a good idea of what your environment can. Now, I got a small surprise for you. I mentioned that at the beginning of my talk, and then I'm done. So stay with me for another minute. Um, since I, I'm doing a lot of tool shit talks over the months, I always get to give away some tools and some, uh, some tooling. Right? So, Unfortunately, I didn't get any vouchers for Azure Docket. I know you would love that one because everybody's pretty amazed. But I do have already raffled four licenses for Cerulean, and I hope you're happy with it. Uh, so the people that see their name on screen, can they raise their hands, please? One, two, is all four people here? OK. Ah. <laughs> So you just come to me and I'll send you the, the license key and you are entitled to a Cerulean uh, uh, license. So that way you can start using Redis and Cosmo and from a management perspective. So with that being said, and on that bombshell, I would say thank you for having me in Finland once more. I hope you enjoyed my talk. And um, well, I'll see you at the panel. Thank you. <laughs>